Jesus fucking Christ, where are they? I've been waiting an hour for these two idiots to show up. Hey there, Obama. Sorry about that. I was busy getting some chocolate chip ice cream. Joe, I've been waiting an hour. Did you eat the entire container? Bro, we were up for three days playing Final Fantasy XIV, trying to catch Donald and Bush up. I needed that stuff. Couldn't you just go to sleep at a normal time like a regular person? Normal? Since when have we ever slept at a normal time? We practically live our lives on our computers. What do you want, Barack? I'm busy working on my re-election campaign. I smell bullshit. I know damn well, Donald. You haven't left your gaming room in at least a week. No, I'm serious. I did work on it. Yeah, I'm calling bullshit. We were on Final Fantasy the entire time. Oh, look who it is. It's the century-old mole rat. Go back to bed now, Sleepy Joe. The adults are talking. You're four years behind, Joe. Donald, you're not faring any better than he is. At least I don't look like my high school date to prom was Cleopatra. Well, at least I don't look like I just finished servicing the Cheetos mascot. I don't care what universe you're from. That's got to hurt. Let's just get started. What are we doing, Obama? We're going to be ranking Godzilla films, starting with the Showa era, and then start working our way down the list. Oh, hell yeah. It must be a rare occasion because I agree with Joe for once. First up to plate, the OG Godzilla, or Gojira for us men of culture. Easiest G-tier ever. The film is perfect. I got to agree. Slap that baby right into G-tier. G-tier right out of the gate. I guess Godzilla raids again is next. Regretfully, yes, how far the king fell here. You just want to throw it in D-tier and call it a day? Yes. Yes. That's what we like to see. What's next? Is that Godzilla versus King Kong? One of the better films in this overall mediocre era of Godzilla. This list just fell apart faster than Russia's military. And why is that, Donald? Really, Barack? You need me to explain a simple reason to you? Two cuts of the film were needed to fix the plot holes. Donald, that was not because of plot holes. It was because of two studios butting heads with each other. Similar to you and Joe, practically every other minute. Oh, come on, man. Why'd you got to throw me under the bus like that? Am I wrong, though, Joe? No, you're not, Obama. Donald, if you were here right now, I'd put your head through a fucking door. Can it be the refrigerator door, at least? You're proving my point, Joe. Anyway, this film is kind of bad regardless. I'm thinking D-tier again. I agree with that. Throw this steamy garbage where it belongs. Rock D-tier is too harsh. You're overlooking a critical detail about this movie. What's so important about this film? It's bad. Barack said it himself. Hold up there a second, Mr. Orange Man. Let Joe cook. I swear, if Joe burns down the kitchen again, I'm putting my foot up your ass. Joe, continue. What detail did I miss? Technically, too. Without this film and King Kong, Godzilla may never have gotten all the sequels he has due to low popularity at the time. Also, it's the first Godzilla film in color. You know what? I think that's a valid point. You think a B-tier would be more fair? B-tier sounds better. I'm fine with that. K looks like Godzilla vs. King Kong is now a B. Up next is Godzilla vs. Mothra. Finally, something within my area of expertise. What the fuck does that mean, Donald? Oh boy, I know where this is going. Barack the fairies make the whole film. They're adorable. How many watch lists do you think he just got placed on? Probably none since he's already on every single one. Hey, it's not my fault that- Donald, I'm stopping you right there before you get us canceled. Hey, I was just going to talk about that businessman trying to get monetary gain from the Mothra egg. Uh Uh-huh, sure you were. What the fuck does that uh uh-huh mean, Barack? Means I think you're a fucking perv. This movie didn't really do anything new, but it did refine the formula of Godzilla into the gold standard for the rest of the series. So what are we thinking? An A-tier? Special effects are great. Godzilla is great. Fights are great. Music is God-tier. Bless you, Akira, for such a wonderful masterpiece. I don't know. I'm thinking B-tier again. The larva fight is such a step down from the fight with adult Mothra. Oh, I forgot about that. And don't get me started on the human subplot in the third act. Should have just left them kids to get radiation sickness. You deserve a bullet just for saying that. I agree with everything Donald listed. All of those aspects are great, but... The movie just lost steam after the adult Mothra fight. The film is A-tier for the fairies alone. Enough of the fairies, goddammit, it's going in B-tier. Eber Horror of the Deep is next, I take it? You mean the film that gave me the third strongest urge to blow my brains on the wall? Only third? Not gonna lie, I agree with Donald. This movie is a pretty low point for the Showa era considering its other entries. Story is bad. Ebra isn't intimidating, and Godzilla's design looks terrible. E-tier, then, because F-tier is reserved for those films. Oh, boy, let's talk about Son of Godzilla. Falling down the stairs of Air Force One was more fun than this. Ooh, self-burn, those are rare. Godzilla was way too expressive in this film. It feels like this was supposed to be a King Kong film, but they just decided, fuck it, and put Godzilla in instead. Are we going to acknowledge Hell Hell no. no. Okay, then. Oh, hell yeah. Destroy All Monsters, my favorite Showa film. A great film to just turn your brain off and watch some kaiju fight each other and destroy stuff. The alien and human subplot was all right and handled relatively well, though they loved using that space jet a lot. Also, that scene where the guy ripped off that lady's earrings actually looked real. I felt that. After Son of Godzilla, Toho knew that Godzilla was declining, so they decided to go out with a bang, and this is the result. 
a monsters filled bonanza bash. Hey, that sounds a lot like the end of your Joe. Don't you dare finish that sentence. It's a great film action wise, but the human story does hold it back from being S tier. I think an A tier is better. I agree with A tier. No objections here. A tier is fine. Do I even have to explain this next one? Giant monsters attack goes straight to F tier. Ah, uh, yes. The second strongest urge to take a 12 gauge straight to my head. What Godzilla movie could possibly be worse than this? We'll get there soon enough. Godzilla versus the smog monster. This is the film equivalent of the word average. Story is average. Monsters are average. Fights are average. I'd say C tier. Donald pretty much summed it up nicely. Okay. Looks like a C tier then. Godzilla versus Gigan is up next. Honestly, I like Gigan as a character, but it sucks. His introduction was was in this train wreck of a movie. What was Toho smoking when they decided to make them talk? I could ask the same thing about you, Donald. Why? You're blessed with my sacred words of wisdom and courage. Your words are verbal cancer that corrupts and sickens everyone that hears them. Who? Half of America, for starters. No, who asked? God damn it. That was fucking funny. Indeed it was, Barack. Back on topic, you guys remember the roars for Godzilla? Like teacher's nails on a chalkboard. Like my grandma, who smoked three packs a day. Who? The one from my mom's side. No, who asked? Fuck, I set myself up for that one. The only reason I'm giving this film a DT here is because it introduced Gigan, arguably one of Godzilla's best villains. That is the only reason. If it wasn't for him, it would be E tier. Now we get to talk about the dumpster fire that is Godzilla versus Megalon. God, this film just sucks ass. There's no other way to spin it. It adds nothing new aside from the kaiju, and even they are mediocre at best. By this time in Japan, TV was becoming more mainstream for adult entertainment. So the only film audience left was kids. How do you know that, Joe? Did you follow some to the theater? Uncalled for, Donald. Baraki was practically sniffing that senator's daughter. Trump, you're friends with Epstein. You don't have the moral high ground here. Yes, I do. Neither of you do because you're both weird as fuck. Now let's get back to ranking the film, please. Chuck it into E tier. We've stated pretty much everything wrong with it. Not everything. We didn't mention Joe's robot friend, Jet Jaguar. Barack, you better hold me back before I beat the bricks off this walking apology from the abortion clinic. Both of you need counseling. The film's going into E tier. Ah, uh, yes. The first Godzilla versus Mecha Godzilla, a timeless classic. After some of the garbage that was being churned out, this movie is a breath of fresh air. While slightly lacking in human story, the fight scenes are magnificent. And Godzilla ripping off Mechagodzilla's head is an icon of this era. I say it's worthy of S tier. Donald, it's a good film, but it's not an S tier. It has problems that hold it back. The human story is almost too bland, and the alien trope had been done before. Also, the other kaiju, King Caesar, was lacking, and I felt it didn't really go anywhere. It's not an S tier, but I also can't give it an A in good faith because of that ass pull involving magnets that Godzilla did. Put it at the top of B tier. I think that's fair. Donald? No comment. Looks like we've arrived at the end of the Showa era. Terror of Mechagodzilla. Why does this film exist? They could have ended it perfectly with Godzilla versus Mechagodzilla. You're a so-called businessman. Figure it out. This film had the potential to be good and tell an interesting story, but it felt so slow because of the half-flushed-out ideas. I say C-tier. This was Toho's attempt at bringing Godzilla back from the campiness that defined it for so long. But it failed, thus marking the end of the Showa era. I will give it credit where it's due. The monster action is spectacular, and bringing back Ishiro Honda and Akira Ifukube definitely helped. Overall, it's an okay film, but it definitely falls short compared to previous Showa entries. D-tier is my vote. Looks like it's a D-tier, then. Overall, most of the Showa films were either very good or very meh, with a few gems and hunks of shit outside of that. Looks like that's the entire Showa era done. I enjoyed that. I'm surprised Sleepy Joe actually made it without falling asleep. Even when we're done, you still find a way to insult Joe, huh, Donald? Hey, come on, you know I'm only joking. I see you guys. I'm off. Jill's getting cranky, and I said I'd take her out for dinner. Hey, I have an idea. Why don't we all go out with each other and our wives for a big get-together? What do you want to do, Donald? Start World War III? Right on the money, Barack. Well, what the fuck are we waiting for in this VC? Let's go have some fun. Welcome back, fellas. Today we're ranking the second era of Godzilla, the Heisei era. Finally, something to take my mind off that shit show fancy get-together. I can't believe they banned us for life. I didn't think they could do that. Donald, that wasn't fancy. You took us to a fucking Taco Bell down the road from Mar-a-Lago. Pretty much the same thing. It really isn't. Sup, boys? We continuing the tier list? That we are, Joe. The Heisei era. The most consistent era of Godzilla in terms of monster design, action, and story. Donald J. Trump, the most consistent president in terms of failures, bad speeches, and crimes. Oh, you've done it now, you raggedy pincushion. Save the cat fights for after the tier list, please. Speaking of cat fights, how's your wife, Donald? Don't even get me started on that. It was a fucking Taco Bell, not Hell's Kitchen. And Melania didn't even show up to the get-together with our wives. We've both been so busy lately that we haven't had much time for each other. I called, but she didn't answer. Too busy practicing for your vacation to Rikers Island. Joe, I say this from the bottom of my heart. I hope there's a spider in your coffee tomorrow. And on that note, I think now's a good time for me to step in and tell both of you to shut the hell up. Return of Godzilla. A perfect fresh start for the king of the monsters. 
bringing him back to his nuclear roots, but instead of the bombings, you have Cold War tensions. Getting rid of all the continuity from the Showa era and having a direct sequel to the original 1954 film was definitely the way to go to bring back the original audience Godzilla was meant for. Some of the horror elements in this film work really well and have a genuine impact though some other do fall flat. The human characters are also pretty good, but it's the prime minister who really steals the show with his simple acting. His ability to show the stress of Japan being caught between two superpowers is really effective. Overall, a great introductory film to this new era, A-tier. Did you just suggest putting a gem like this movie in damn A-tier? It's a solo adventure, whereas we're used to seeing Godzilla duke it out with other kaiju. It drags the film down. The OG film was a solo adventure, and that film is goaded. Well, where would you rank this film, Sleepy Joe? Obviously, G-tier, the movie, has everything needed for a perfect Godzilla experience. Barack, I think Joe's dementia is kicking in again. Is he off his meds? Joe, ain't no way this is a G-tier film. Its drawbacks keep it from reaching G-tier. So it's A-tier, then? A-tier is too low for this. S-tier is a perfect fit. The film is almost perfect, but has a flaw or two that holds it back. I'm not settling for anything but G-tier. Well, looks like none of us want to budge, so we need a tiebreaker. Barack, don't you dare invite him. You know what he's going to do if he sees our show of rankings. And he knows more about Godzilla than all three of us. I'm messaging him. I can already hear the cries of anger as he sees this tier list. Yo, Barack, how's it hanging? Just finished moving into my place a few days ago, plus a sick new gaming room. That's great, George. We're doing a tier list right now, and we need a tiebreaker vote. What are we ranking? All the Godzilla movies. We're doing the Heisei era right now. Hop in my stream, George. What in the hell are these goofy-ass Showa rankings? Why are over half of them below B-tier? Are you fucking nuts? George, just give us the tiebreaker. Shut it, pig. Go back to your bucket of lard. Democracy truly is dead if this is where you place the Showa films. I'm disappointed in all of you. We know we just started the Heisei era, and we can't place Return of Godzilla. Where would you rank it? Where did everyone else want to put it? I wanted S-tier. Donald was thinking A, and Joe was G. Return of Godzilla was an almost perfect start to the Heisei era. The only complaints I hear are the design of Godzilla, and that there's no kaiju for him to fight. With that in mind, I'm sorry with Barack S tier. You no. guys shitting me. I think I'm going to stay so you guys don't mess up any more rankings. Much appreciated, George. And Donald, I better not hear any of those jokes out of your mouth. You just increased your chances of hearing them because now the thought is there. Moving on, let's talk about Godzilla versus Biolante. The themes regarding bioengineering are pretty thought-provoking for the time. Though I found myself feeling confused as the plots and subplots became more complex. The fast-paced action is well done and it keeps you engaged. And the race to obtain G-cells is fascinating, even if it's confusing at times. The film shined light on how Godzilla's existence impacts the world at large, both for good and bad, culminating in some interesting discourse. I can apply the same to Donald's existence and how he's failed as a human being. I'm a golden example of what a human being should be. I have solved numerous problems plaguing our great country, and I will be remembered for that. You'll certainly be remembered as an example of a president. Sure, let's look up to the president whose breakfast was drone striking the Middle East. And inciting a damn insurrection is better? Hey, George, what date in your presidency am I thinking of right now? Another crude 9-11 joke. How on brand of you, Donald? Love you, too. Back on topic, where do we think this film goes? The monster action between each other and the military is well done and hold up nicely even today. The human side of things is balanced out well, even if it's a bit confusing. All of the characters are played well, but Dr. Shiragami and Kuraki are the best in my opinion. More of a Mickey Sagusa man myself due to her involvement in later entries, but overall Godzilla vs. Biollante was a very good film. I'm thinking an A-tier. I don't object to that. No complaints here. A-tier works. Okay, what film is next? Godzilla vs. King Ghidorah. Oh, oh I, I fucking, fucking love this, this movie. movie. Pause. The fuck did Trump just say? Is it wrong to share your personal opinion now? How else would we know who the assholes are? I can't find a flaw in his logic. How could you hate this movie? Call it a hunch, but I've got a good guess why he hates it. Take your best shot, Georgie boy. Something to do with a lack of stars and stripes in a certain world position. I'm not even going to try unpacking that. Make of it what you will. The monster action is stellar and explosive, even if it's more brief. King Ghidorah's modernized design is sleek as hell and still looks fantastic. And Mika King Ghidorah is awesome, even if his screen time was minimal. Still doesn't excuse its more fantastical story. I don't care what your arguments are. Regardless if a take is bad or not, I see where Donald is coming from. The story kind of nosedives if you examine it too much. The time travel trope as a whole is hard to do well. Not impossible, but hard. And this film handled it bad. The time travel wasn't executed well, I won't deny that. But the movie's best aspects are definitely the action. And the relationship between Godzilla and Japan. Overall, still a good entry in Ghidorah. Dora was a welcome sight, but the human side of the film holds it back. I think a B-tier would be good. More like D for dog water. Democracy, Donnie. It's going in B-tier. Like 2016 and 2020, Donald again loses the popular vote. This tier list is rigged and riddled with fraud. Cope, Seath, Mall, go hold another press conference at Four Seasons Landscaping. Goddamn! Joe out of nowhere with the left hook, ladies and gentlemen. Moving on to the Heisei Godzilla versus Mothra. Hey, Donald. What is it? You're a perv. Fuck off. Fairies? Fairies. The story is very good, and Batra is arguably one of the best kaiju to come out of the Heisei era. The film leans harder on the fantastical 
rather than political side, and I felt that the characters talked way too much instead of having the film speak for itself. Despite a lacking human story, the monster action is quality. Hey, say goodness. Though the final battle suffers due to beams, a lot of beams. My vote goes to A tier. Batra is a nice opposite to Mothra in the mythology, and Godzilla is a nice big antagonist that gets Mothra and Batra to team up. Sounds fair to me. Definitely a step down in terms of story, but Akira's score and the fast pace still make it a good film. All right, Godzilla versus Mecha Godzilla 2. Now, this is how you make a damn good Godzilla film. This film's got all the qualifications for a great watch. Seeing as Toho wanted to end the era with this, they decided to make it a good one. The story is super well written, the characters are good, and none feel left out. And the monster action is top-notch. Everything about this movie is balanced out well. The monster designs are great as ever. Rodan's new look was a well-needed makeover. And while I wasn't too fond of Mechagodzilla's redesign, it's grown on me. Also, who can forget Baby Godzilla? The little guy is adorable with a lot of personality, and the scene and score when he leaves with Godzilla tugs at your heart. The film, in my opinion, is everything that makes the Heisei era good. Amazing monster action characters you can connect with on an emotional level. And great stories to take you out of reality for a brief moment. I'm saying S-tier. Whack that shit in S-tier. S-tier, baby. Unanimous S-tier. Sadly, we're covering Godzilla versus Space Godzilla now. I don't even hate this movie. I just feel bad for it at this point. If Mecha Godzilla 2 is everything right, then this film is everything wrong. Space Godzilla has a nice design that definitely has its fans, though Mogera is a straight downgrade from Mecha Godzilla. Space Godzilla went through that Giuliani development. Twisted and corrupted by the black hole of Trump influence. Hey, man, I thought he was pretty reasonable. Bro really just called Mr. Trial by Combat hair dye sweating Giuliani reasonable. At least I had him when he was going through his political arc. Donald got him in his crazy uncle at Thanksgiving arc. Hey, George, remember this scene in Godzilla versus Space? Space Godzilla? Huh? Which one? Give me a sec. Oh, damn you, Donald. Let's move on, please. We're almost done here. There is some good action between the monsters and military. Space Godzilla is a welcome addition to the kaiju roster and some okay human characters. This film also truly showed the development that Mickey Sagosa underwent throughout the Heisei films. I think a C-tier works best. It's definitely not the best Heisei film, but the Heisei era had a standard of quality that keeps them above the lower tiers. Works for me. I'm fine with C-tier. At last, Godzilla vs. Destroya, one of the best Godzilla films ever made. This film's action is incredible. Destroya truly feels like the end all be all of this era. The final villain being birthed from the very weapon that destroyed Godzilla was a big brain move and brings the era full circle. If Toho had ended here and Godzilla was never made again, I would still adore it. Akira's final rendition of Godzilla's theme really tells you that something is wrong with Godzilla. And Requiem is God tier and never fails to make me cry. The idea of Godzilla's death is given the proper respect that it deserves. Junior's death was so sad and you could feel Godzilla's pain. And when he died, even the humans seemed sad. Despite Godzilla terrorizing their people and cities, they couldn't help but seem sad since he was part of their identity as a nation. And even with Godzilla being the focus, there is still enough dedicated to the human side as well. Mickey's character is wrapped up well. Bringing back Momoko Kochi as Emiko really cements the horrors of atomic power compared to the new generation. Honestly, I can't find anything to criticize about this film. It's just that good. Every aspect of this film was handled with such care and reverence. The monsters, the action, the characters, the story. Godzilla vs. Destroya is a perfect conclusion. And because of that, the only place it truly deserves to be is G-tier. All facts, no printer. Couldn't have said it better even if I tried, Obama. And thus concludes the Heisei era, a spectacular era for our favorite king of the monsters. Overall, the consistency of this era was great. It had its rough spots, but this era has endless rewatchability as far as I'm concerned. Hey, wait a minute. Obama, I just realized we're missing some films on here. Wait, what? Which ones? It looks like Ghidorah, the three-headed monster, an invasion of Astro Monster. Let the viewers decide. Tell us in the comments where we should put these two Showa films. I'm telling you guys, Minus One is going to be an absolute banger. Oh, absolutely. I can't wait to see this film in the theater with a nice bag of popcorn and a nice cold Coke. I'm looking forward to watching The New Empire. I hope they expand on the Hollow Earth lore and hopefully some more new kaiju. You know, we should all go to G-Fest sometime. That would be so fun. Oh, I'm so down for that. Joe, I fucking hate you. This is all your fault. Man really just woke up and chose violence. Have you seen what's happening, Barack? They're trying to throw me in jail. Good. Good. I hate all of you. Good. Good. Joe, can't you do something for once in your beige-colored life and give me a pardon, pretty please? Yeah, sure. Wait, really? Yeah, I'll give you one in my second term. Might as well hurry up and finish our rankings then for the remaining Godzilla films. Looks like Donnie Boy is going to need hella good protection in prison. I got that covered. I hired the guys who guarded Epstein. Low blow, Sleepy Joe. Not even I would stoop that low. Coming from the wannabe autocrat 
autocrat who incited a damn insurrection and was in bed with Putin and Kim. Enough foreplay. Either start kissing or shut up and let's get ranking. Speaking of ranking, let's get the two missing Showa films ranked before we begin. We've been looking at you guys' suggestions and we've decided to average them out for the most fair ranking. Ghidorah, the three-headed monster, is going into S-tier for introducing Godzilla's greatest rival. An invasion of Astro Monsters going into B-tier. Can we hurry this up already? My lawyers are in the other room waiting for me. Good, maybe they can use your trash Godzilla takes as evidence of your incompetence. Oh boy, Godzilla 98. Do I even have to say it? No, you don't. F-tier. F-tier. Not gonna lie, I haven't even seen this one. You're not missing anything anyway. All right, time to rank the Millennium Era. I guess Godzilla 2000 is first. This era probably has some of the most underrated Godzilla films, and I could never understand why. I will give it credit where it's due. Godzilla's design is both beautiful and intimidating. The same goes for most of the Millennium Era designs. This film is honestly pretty mixed for me. It has its moments, but its story is kind of forgettable. Some of the new CGI is done well, but a lot of it is very noticeable and does distract you. The story also feels rather unfinished. If they played more into the science part of it with Godzilla and why he's almost invincible, I think it would have been better. Also, the monster action seems like a downgrade from the Heisei era. It seems more clunky and less fluent. My vote is C-tier. The movie holds up on its own, but it definitely got off on the wrong foot. C-tier is a respectable ranking for this. I was going to say B-tier, but I'll agree to a C-tier. Godzilla versus Megaguirus. Where do we even start with this? Was the design crew on vacation or something because they just used the Godzilla 2000 design again? You can say the same about your campaign slogan, Don. Don't fix what ain't broken, Barack. Oh, how ironic. Personally, I don't mind the design being reused. It's a very nice design. On the topic of designs, Mega Geras' design is amazing, and bringing in the Mega Nulon and Mega Nura was a nice callback to the original Rodan. Also, let's not forget the best quality about this film, the Millennium Godzilla score. It may not be Akira, but Michiru Oshima's Godzilla theme is just as memorable, and I'm glad it was used through most Millennium films. Despite these positives, the movie has a lot of negatives. The story is very confusing, and the monster action, while entertaining, is rather silly for the serious tone the film tries to convey. The characters are also kind of bland as far as Godzilla characters go. Kiriko Tsujimori does okay, but that's about it. I'm thinking of C-tier again. The film is okay on its own and would be a good introductory film to a new Godzilla fan. But for veterans of the series, it's not as memorable. C-tier works. Well said, Barack. C-tier is fine by me. Oh, hell yeah. Godzilla, Mothra King, Ghidorah. Giant monsters all out attack. Now, this was the slam dunk that the Millennium Era needed. Someone grab this Godzilla a thigh master because he needs to work some of that belly off. You need it more, Donald. You're fatter than he is. George, what's got you so pissed off today? Your very existence pisses me off, Donald. Go eat a pretzel and calm down. That was one time, you dick. Both of you shut up. What do you think of the movie? Great action, relatable characters, good monster designs. This movie pulls no punches. This film, much like the original, shows the price humans pay from Godzilla's destruction, especially that girl in the hospital scene who can't escape. That was terrifying. Despite the more fantastical story compared to other Millennium Era films, it really works well. It feels like a modernized Showa film, and I think that's awesome. The human characters are simple, but that gives them their charm. No convoluted ideas, but two simple views, one from the reporter Yuri Tachibana and the other from her father. Overall, this movie is great. My vote is a high B tier, a very good film, but it suffers a bit from some of the monster designs, especially King Ghidorah, who is super small compared to his imposing Heisei design. A high B tier sounds good to me. Put it above Godzilla versus King Ghidorah. High B tier works for me. Up next is Godzilla against Mechagodzilla, a staple millennium film alongside GMK. Hands down the best Mechagodzilla design ever put on the silver screen. The Monsterverse design is good, but this one is straight ice. Hey, Sleepy Joe, do me a favor and never say that again. Or what? Is your singular brain cell bouncing around upstairs going to post again on Truth Social? Clever. Did your teleprompter tell you that one? Quit it, you two. This film is great, and I'd argue that this is one of Godzilla's top five designs, maybe even top three. Akane Yashiro, played by Yumi Koshaku, is one of the best written Godzilla characters of the millennium era. Her desire for revenge is actually flushed out pretty well. The scene where the original Godzilla is awakened and takes control of Mechagodzilla is pure G-fan gold. And the final shot with the power down Mechagodzilla in the sunset is iconic. Turning on its master just like your VP, Donald. I didn't tell my VP to shoot our donors in the face. Oh, fuck you. That was one time. Sorry, George, but he does have a point. Both of you, shut the hell up. Save it for after the rankings. This movie doesn't do many new things for the franchise, but it is the most consistent in terms of story for the millennium era and not being a standalone reboot. It has good characters that you can connect with and very good action that is a balanced blend of CGI and suitmation. I'm voting mid B tier. It has a good simple story and characters, but doesn't really do much new and sticks with pre-established ideas. Mid B tier is fine by me. Fine by me as well. Godzilla against Mechagodzilla is going in mid B tier. 
Almost at the end, guys. Up next is Tokyo SOS. The action is still fantastic. Michiru Oshima's score is as great as ever. And her new theme for Mothra is just as good as her score for Godzilla and Kiryu. The connection to the original Mothra movie was also a welcome addition. And I was so happy to see Hiroshi Koizumi return in this film, even for a little bit. Hey, Donald. Barack, don't you dare finish that. He won't, but I will. Donald, you're a perv. George, let's play a little game of I spy. I spy with my little... Don't you dare finish that sentence, Donald. As much as I like this movie, I can't deny it was definitely a step down. A lot of the past connections weren't explored at all, and you can tell that they were used more to get the audience to watch the movie. I agree with Joe on this one. If the film dedicated time to exploring the past connections, I think it would have been a much better watch, but it wasted so much potential. Also, the characters are even blander this time. Yumiko Shaku had a brief moment, but the film didn't feature her at all. I wish they kept her character in, as I liked her development she had during the previous film. If they explored the connections with Mothra in the past, I would give it a high B, maybe even A tier. But with all the wasted potential, I think C-tier is fair. I have to agree with Joe on this. It had a lot of wasted potential and brought no new ideas to the table as far as I'm concerned. It's definitely better than the lower C-tier entries. Put it right in the middle. Godzilla Final Wars, the final Godzilla film in the millennium era. In terms of story, it's already been told. The alien trope is no stranger to the Godzilla franchise. This was Godzilla's 50th anniversary. And Toho went out with a bang on this one. This movie is pure action and I love it. To take a quote from Up From The Depths, you're a legend, by the way. It's the equivalent of a burger from your favorite fast food joint. Godzilla's design is fucking beautiful. No doubt one of the best designs ever made. All the other kaiju redesigns have varying levels of success, but undoubtedly the best redesign goes to Gigan. Gigan's glow up is like going from Steve Buscemi to Brad Pitt. Accurate. And the cast is incredible. Akira Takarada, Akira Nakao, Kenji Sahara, and Kumi Mizuno. The cast is stacked. My vote is A tier. The story falls apart under any criticism, but the story was not the priority. Giving a proper 50th anniversary send off to Godzilla was. I have to agree on that. So much respect was given and crammed into this film. It's just a fantastic time all the way through. A tier is a fine ranking for this Godzilla film. It may not have the best story, but the action and fan service was top quality. I don't think we'll ever get another film like Final Wars for a long time. It may not have been the most popular era, but the Millennium Era had some of the best fights and monster designs of Godzilla history. And for that, it's earned its place. Also, Obama question, how are we going to rank the next two eras since they're both a bit too short for their own video? Probably just rank them together. I think that's the best option. But let's see what the audience thinks and if they have a better idea. <laughs>
Wait, huh? What did I say? Donald, what the hell, dude? Get Jack Smith on the damn phone and add defamation to Don's rap sheet. Wait, you guys aren't seriously thinking of putting this film any higher than F tier, are you? Uh, yes, yes we are. Donald, every time I think you can't go any lower, you somehow prove me wrong. Donald, we of all people should understand just how goaded this film is. You guys really went to watch this film in theaters? Kept track of a cast bigger than the U.S. Congress and expect me to believe this film is good? Made by the dude who gave us the treasure, Neon Genesis Evangelion, so yes. Speaking of Evangelion, we should totally do a tier list on that. I don't see how you guys like this film. It's confusing, boring, and Godzilla feels like an afterthought. An afterthought? This Godzilla is an allegory for the Fukushima disaster that rocked Japan in 2011. He is literally anything but an afterthought. This movie is a definite G-tier. Nothing less will do. I move to disqualify Donald's opinion on the grounds that it's slander. I second that. Motion granted. Shin Godzilla is automatically G-tier. Welcome to Sleepy Joe's America, everybody. Moving on. Quite a few people have been eagerly waiting on our opinions on the Netflix Godzilla films. A lot of wasted potential, if you ask me. Planet of Monsters plays with interesting concepts, and the idea of Earth's ecosystem evolving around Godzilla was a novel idea. Godzilla being brought into the medium of anime is something hundreds of fans have wanted to see. And the opening minutes of the movie really set a high bar. The opening minutes are the best part of the whole film. After that, it just squanders all of it. When I first got the announcement of the film, I was hoping for a rich world and interesting characters, and I was left disappointed. Just like your three marriages. I'm surprised you remembered how many marriages I've been in Sleepy Joe. The new dementia pills must be working. Planet of Monsters has interesting ideas, but it was hampered by a lot of plain characters, technological BS, and an uninteresting story. I'm thinking D-tier. Bottom of D-tier works for me. Fine with that as well. Planet of Monsters and D-tier is fine with me. Oh, Lord City on the Edge of Battle is next. By all accounts, this movie is better than Planet of Monsters, but wow, did it take some egregious missteps. You can't tease Mechagodzilla in the film, then hardly include him. Technically, he is in the film. I do not count Mechagodzilla City as a true Mechagodzilla. To give it credit, it did make the cast small and everyone is given more to do. But the techno babble is still a glaring problem that bogs it down. At least the characters are more bearable to listen to. And the idea of the nano metal was at least decently interesting. City on the Edge of Battle is an infinitely better watch than Planet of Monsters, but it committed the cardinal sin of teasing a monster that never showed up. For that, I cast my vote as F tier. I do have to agree. It's a shame that this film is better, yet it ends up in F. City on the Edge of Battle is sadly put in F tier this is honestly the only F tier that could have been avoided if the film had been better. Finally, The Planet Eater, probably my favorite one of the anime trilogy. 100%. This film is definitely the best out of all three. The more Lovecraftian take on Ghidorah is probably the best move this trilogy could have taken. While a rather unorthodox take on the three-headed dragon, it pays off nicely and ends on a high note. Another positive is we actually get to see a kaiju fight this time albeit being kind of lackluster. Definitely the best part of the whole film is when Ghidorah destroys the spaceship. The humans realizing they are already dead before it happens really lives up to Ghidorah's reputation. Shrinking the cast even more did help. But all three of these films have the same issue with characters not being flushed out and are used more as vessels for their ideas. Though this movie trilogy isn't the best, you can't help but admire that they took a risk and tried something new for Godzilla. With everything in mind for the Planet Eater, I think Top of D tier is a fitting placement. Top of D tier sounds fair to me. Fine with me as well. Planet Eater is going to Top of D tier. Now let's return to the MonsterVerse and finish this tier list once and for all, gentlemen. Ah, yes, Godzilla, King of the Monsters. All of us going to the theater on opening night and having a fantastic viewing experience was so nice. God, I remember that night. It was great. Donald, you ordered two Diet Cokes, three Bunch of Crunches, and threw up in my car. Don't dwell on the past, Barack. You still owe me for the new upholstery, you fucking asshat. Quiet, ladies. We have films to rank. King of the Monsters altered Godzilla design as a step up from 2014. The new dorsal plates are a nice callback to the 54 design. I don't know what shit the critics were smoking this film was fire all the way through. King of the Monsters did fix the lack of kaiju screen time, and their designs are absolutely incredible. However, King of the Monsters still suffers from the dark lighting that plagued 2014, and the story is still a bit imbalanced between the human and kaiju side. The human side of the story is good. But Emma Russell's reasons for unleashing Ghidorah and the other Titans seemed rather one-dimensional. On the opposite side of that, Madison Russell is pretty good, and Ken Watanabe's sacrifice is beautifully done. The final confrontation in Boston was fantastic. Really takes me back to the old days of my youth. Reminiscing about observing the T-Rexes in the Cretaceous period, Joe? Donald, don't start now. Question, Donald. Did you ever find the fairies to simp for? Did you ever find the WMDs in Iraq? George, don't pull the pin on that grenade. Just move on. Taking everything into account, I'm voting S-tier. 
King of the Monsters was a Godzilla movie made for the fans. S tier it is. S tier is a fine ranking for this work of art. King of the Monsters goes to S tier. And at long last, people, Godzilla vs. Kong, the final film of the tier list. I mean, what else is there to say? This film is a good old monster brawl. And shit, is it a good one? This movie ironed out all the kinks in the monster verse. No super dark lighting even at night and a balanced human story with the kaiju. I'm super glad Adam Wingard is returning to direct The New Empire because his work on GVK was perfection. Despite Kong being at a disadvantage, he put up a damn good fight against Godzilla, using his superior intelligence and agility to maintain his edge. I can't find anything wrong with the human characters either. Gia and Kong's chemistry was super wholesome. Only complaint is Ren Serizawa should have gotten more to do in the story. Also, who can forget watching Mecha Godzilla throw Godzilla around like Trump in court? You stay out of my business, Sleepy. If I did, you'd still be in jail right now. I'm saying G tier, not because of the amazing story, but because of the weight behind the film. This was the first time in 60 plus years where the two biggest monsters ever were on screen together again. And the fact this film performed as well as it did, even in the pandemic, speaks volumes. Barack's got my vote. G-tier it is. I agree with that. G-tier is fine. And so we end off our Godzilla film tier list with an atomic bang, Godzilla versus Kong going to G-tier. We finally ranked all the Godzilla films, ladies and gentlemen. Holy crap, we did it. We actually made it to the end. And with only a few trash takes in there, I consider that a win. Oh, come on. My Shin Godzilla take is not that bad. No. No, it definitely is, Donald. And guys, leave any comments or suggestions on what we should rank next. Have a wonderful rest of your day.